Thank you for tuning into Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Well, what I have today is a Class D output driver card, a Type 3 board, as uh, Perry would show in his tutorial. This is from a Hyphonics Colossus. I do believe it's a 3200 watt, what they call a dual mono uh, amplifier. Um, I don't have the actual uh, amplifier designation on this board. It just says Hyphonics Colossus on it. But through looking through online pictures, it does look like the uh, Hyphonics Colossus dual mono, which is a 3200 watt amplifier. This uses 12 IRFP 260Ns on the output, uh, six per bank. Uh, so that number roughly coincides with what I'm seeing for the output. But I just wanted to do a quick video on this particular card as it's a little different than your standard type three boards that you see uh, a lot on a lot of these Hyphonics amplifiers. Um, the first thing I want to point out, I think where they're getting that dual from, uh, dual mono, I should say, that there's, they have printed on the front of their amplifiers, is from this setup right here uh, in the middle. Um, for you techs that are familiar with the Type 3 boards, you'll see that they have a single 072 um, in line with a uh, 211 or 311. Well, on this card here, you'll see that we have a 072 in the middle, and we have a, a 211 on each side of that 072. So I think this is where they're coming up with that dual uh, statement. So one 211 here is gonna give you your uh, plus minus five volt square wave on uh, this uh, Q1, Q2 on for this bank, for this 21844. And then this 211 here is going to give you your plus minus 5 volt square wave on uh, Q14. I think that says Q18. So you have a square wave for this side going to pin 1 and then a square wave from this side going to pin 1. Uh, this is your protection I see here at the top. This is going to be a uh, 293, which is uh, paying attention to your overcurrent uh, shunt resistors on uh, both sides of the board, bank A and bank B. Otherwise, it's set up pretty much the same as any other 21844 driver board. Uh, you have the two max transistors here that are responsible for your uh, shutdown which these maxes very rarely I have found very rarely fail uh, they are hard to find they're hard to come by um, I do have a thousand of them on the way if anyone needs any just hit me up shoot me an email um, so otherwise this is pretty straightforward and standard uh, as as a standard type 3 driver board you have your two 2d transistors on the outside of the board here uh, which is coming from your square wave going into pin 1 um, you have your your going through your inductor uh, going to pin 2 so otherwise this is straightforward uh, the same setup, I just I think that's where they're getting their dual from, even though there's many, many, many amplifier type 3 boards out there that use the dual 21844s, but only have one single 211 or 311 driving both ICs. So yep, so the 072 has got your input coming in, converting it 
uh, passing it to the uh, 211. Turn the 211 is turning into a square wave, going into your uh, 1 a.m. and 2 a transistors, and then heading off to your uh, your 2D transistors, going to pin one. So pretty pretty normal, except to use a dual 211 or 311. So that's just a general breakdown there for you of um, just the basic layout and operation of this drive board. All right, so I am about ready to install the uh, the IR21844S ICs. I do have um, them lined up here. So I've got two, two o ICs. I have my wrist strap on for ESD protection. I'm just going to set these ICs off to the side here just a little bit. The iron is heating up. I'm going to put my Amtec flux on the pads of the IC here. I use flux as kind of a glue to hold it in place. And if you notice too, uh, there are two pads missing on this board. These two pads are not used, or there are no connection pads. So I'm not too worried about those. So I'm just going to take my IC and try to grab it. And we'll just fit it right onto the board here. Again, using my flux as kind of a glue. The flux kind of holds the things in place as I work with them. And I just push it flat, make sure it's flat and even with the board. Just like that. There, make sure those ICs are in place. I'm going to have to put my magnifying headset on so I can see the pads clearly. So I just have a really simple process of doing these. I just uh, take my iron, line up the IC, and just tack on one pin there and the other pin. And then the same process for this IC. Just like that. It takes just a second, just a quick touch on the leads. I just make sure that the ICs are lined up where I want them to be. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera with my headset here. And otherwise, we're looking good. So then what I do, I just take just a, just a touch of solder on the tip of the iron and just lightly tap the pins. Just like that. And then I do the same for the other IC. Just adding just a little bit of solder to the tip of the iron. Just a little bit. And just like that, all the pins are soldered down. And I'm going to add just a little bit of solder to the pins that are no connection. 
Because any of you that uh, deal with these boards know that those ICs run extremely hot. So any added solder I can add to the to the legs of those ICs just adds just that much more of a, of a source to sink any heat. Um, and that's pretty much what I do for these boards here. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Takes, like I said, just a just a just a minute to put those ICs in place. And uh, what I'm going to do is just clean up the flux. And again, uh, the just those quick taps with the iron to the legs of the IC um, is all you need as long as you're using a good flux. Uh, and it helps reduce the amount of time that you're spending on the pins. Uh, to reduce any transfer of that heat into the IC itself. Uh, these things are, these ICs are fairly picky, fairly finicky. They don't like heat. That is pretty much the board there for you. So I was just wanting to give you a quick rundown of this particular setup, this particular card. Um, I'll try to get it to where you can see the designators on the board here. Uh, if you have any questions about this board, please feel free to contact me. Uh, my information's pretty widely available, ellensburgamplifier.com um, is uh, my website where you can reach me directly. And from there, we will uh, move on to the actual amplifier. Again, I do thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you are interested in this content. I do thank you all for your support. Uh, please uh, go over and vote for my submission too for Keysight. Um, this description's down below on how to get there. And uh, I do appreciate all your guys' support. Thank you for watching. I will catch you on the next one.